Hello everyone, my name is Catherine Darling and this is my audition video for a master painter with Paint Night. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I just want to welcome everyone tonight. I think it's a really big deal that you're all here, whether you were forced here or not. Um, and a double thanks for those who force people to come out and step out of their comfort zone. And for a lot of you, you might be coming back to art, having had negative experiences in the past. And all I want to do for you tonight is give you the experience that you can have a lot of fun with art. Um, what I want you to remember is that it's not necessarily about having something that is perfect or what exactly what you imagine. I want you to remember that what you're trying to aim for is that you have got something that surprises you and excites you and you know that you've put energy and time and effort into and that's what I want you to be really proud of tonight. So, to start things off, I would like to introduce what we are doing tonight. So, it's paint night with a twist. We are actually going to be using charcoal and something called gesso. So, gesso is a substance that painters typically put on their canvas, and then when they let that dry, they take their oil paint, and they would paint over that surface. And the reason they do that is that oil paint over time corrodes, and so that it's almost like a plaster surface uh, allows the painting to... Um, keep its quality for a long time. Um, but tonight, we are going to take it and we're going to use the gesso as if it's paint and we're going to combine it with the charcoal and it makes for a really neat effect. So what you can see here is this is what we will be doing. And if you're kind of freaking out about uh, the detail that's in this, don't panic because when I ran this same activity with my art club just last week, uh, these are some examples of what people were able to do. So, like I said, you're going to be able to surprise yourself, and I think you're going to be really happy with what happens at the end. Um, so, before we get going, and before we talk about materials, I just want to point it to you, and this is going to help you figure out how to get this wolf on your paper. I want to point out that when you look at this paper, I want you to see three shades of color. Um, we've got our darks, and we have our mid-tone grays, and then we have our, our white highlights. So if you just tell yourself that there's really only three shades on here that you need, oh, it becomes a whole lot more simple. And then trust me, when you take that gesso and you start putting it onto your paper, it's going to give you, without even trying, a whole bunch of mid-tones uh, and different tones and uh, shades of gray. Um, so our materials tonight are our palette with about a dollar size amount of gesso on it. Uh, your charcoal, and what's fun about the charcoal is that because it's this big, chunky piece of charcoal, uh, you're gonna, if you're one of those people that you're gonna try and do all the little tiny details, I've taken that out for you, I'm making your life easier. You got this big piece of chunky charcoal, and honestly, you're just gonna put in all these black shapes and spaces. I want you to try to not think of this as a wolf with a whole bunch of individual fur hairs. I want you to think about this as uh, a bunch of shapes. So we've got these really dark shapes. We have this big circular shape that bounces back out, and a big half, half moon shape here, and almost this smile type thing, and almost like a triangle with a circle in it. So we're thinking about shapes, and we can't focus on doing all those tiny little individual hairs. Um, last but not least, are our paintbrushes. Um, I will most likely be using this smaller one, but if you're bold, you can use a larger one for some of the, the bigger sections, if you like, for the whites. <clears throat> so the first thing that I want you to do is to grab that big chunky piece of charcoal and accept and acknowledge that you're about to get pretty messy. And um, you can either tell the person sitting beside you that they've smudged charcoal over their face, or you don't have to. That's, I'm gonna leave that up to you. They're your friends, you decide. Um, so, easiest place that I like to start, it's not a nose anymore, people. We're gonna think of it as a half circle. And we're gonna just take our charcoal, and we are gonna just put that in nice and fast. Fast, because I don't want you to really stress. I want you to just get it on there. And the beautiful thing about charcoal, oh, it just makes such a beautiful, dark, deep, rich black. Okay, what other shapes do we have? Well, we've got all this shading under here, so we're just going to block that in. Okay. And then, like I said, we've got this nice big oval with a point shape almost. 
Gonna block that in. And see now, if you're getting a little crazy or you're a little bit nervous and you've got charcoal flying off where you maybe didn't want it, don't panic because when we go in with that white gesso, we can cover up our mistakes. Um, so again, I've got a bit of a, I've put a bit of a mark on there that I didn't really want there. Not the end of the world. So now I'm going to move into the eyeball. Um, like I said, we've got a bit of a triangular shape here with a circle in it. So we're going to want to make that nice and dark. And then we got a little mark coming off here. And then it's dark again in here. It's actually all quite dark in there. And remember, we can lighten that up afterwards. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more fun because we don't have to be so careful. Um, I'm honestly just going to make these big, I might even use the side of my charcoal, these big strokes. So I've got these big dark patches. Again, I'm going to follow these big, almost triangular shapes of this dark, dark fur. So it comes across here. Kind of comes up here almost. And again, we can give it that little bit of a furry feel if we want by the way we do the marks. <clears throat> Okay, and something else that we can do while we're doing this is I've got this nice big poof of fur that comes out here. And what I can do is I can look kind of where does it line up. It's almost level with the top of the nose. So if I think of it where the top of my nose is, that's maybe where I'm going to put in my big fur tuft. And then I know I've got another one out here. Okay, and this is all dark. Okay, so I've got this cute fluffy ear up here, which has a big white patch, a big white circle in here. So I'm just going to have mark that in there. And then it's not, oh, I've got this nice dark line. It's kind of a medium gray in here, so I can just do light. I can gently press the charcoal to get that nice medium gray in there. Um, so I'm looking at this, I maybe want to step back, have a quick drink. <laughs> um, I want to look at how things are lined up. I actually want to pull this, I've got a whole extra layer of fur over here that I've kind of forgotten to put in. And I've got a really nice little kind of white chunk under here that I want to block in for later. Um, again, I want to focus on the dark shapes that are happening. So this beautiful dark fur at the top that pulls down into the nose. So this kind of comes down past the eye and over. You don't have to take don't have to take too long with this. That's the beauty of the big chunky charcoal. It can do a large space quite quickly. Now this eyeball, we've got a bunch of dark around here. Got some lines coming up here. What I'm doing now is I'm almost drawing in the white chunks without even meaning to. But I got a nice white half moon here, and a big white chunk under here. So I'm just going to make sure that I leave those sections white. If you smudge, if you're getting really dirty, again, not a big deal, because when we put that gesso in, we can make it pop again. We can make it white. So I'm going to make that half moon shape in there, and then I'm going to come down and make this shape under the wolf's eye here. Okay. And you can kind of see that I'm not doing it as dark. These are more of my medium grays, all in here. So I'm actually going to do nice, light, medium gray. I mean, it does have some darker sort of areas in it that I can add in. And actually, as we come down from this eye, it's quite dark in there. There we go. We've got a bit of a line coming down. We've got some cute little whiskers we can put in at any point. Bring my line down. Now I see that that comes in a little bit more. Okay, touch up my ear. Make sure my head, oh, this is 
So it's got some darks in it. So at this point, I hope that you are covered in charcoal and having a giggle with your friends. Um, if you want, you can wipe your hands off on your rag. Um, I think maybe what we can do at this point is focus on putting in a little bit more of our light gray tones. So all under his chin here, it's nice soft grays. It's nice and gray in here. Put in a couple whiskers. Okay, so right now I'm missing. I just haven't really finished this part under the eye. Okay, so that didn't take us too long. Um, we are going to want to clean off our charcoaly hands. Now the fun thing about charcoal is this beautiful dusty powder, which you now have all over you. Um, and the gesso really, it really gets caught in it in a really, the way they just mesh, you'll feel it as you start to do it. So um, I'm excited for you to experience that. So if you, now, the thing that might happen is people love to just really, you know, we're, we're rolling, we've got that motion of our brushes, we're about to put the paint in and we're going to get going. And some people get really caught up in that motion. And before they know it, it just might be all very gray and all, we might have lost our darks and we might have lost our whites. Um, and not a big deal because if we just take a couple minutes, have a drink with a friend, chill out for a bit, it'll dry quite quickly. And then we can go back in with our charcoal and put it over, or we can go back in with a clean white gesso brush and make those spots pop or make those spots really dark. So what I would like you to do now is grab your paintbrush and your palette with your gesso. Now this is where we get to call ourselves painters. Not traditional at the moment, but you always got to be keeping it fresh and doing different things. Um, so, while my brush is clean and has this nice white, white uh, gesso on it, I'm going to put that in my white spots because as soon as this touches anywhere that I've done charcoal, it, my brush is going to get really messy and really gray. Not a big deal. That's why we have gesso here. We just keep whitening up. So, highlights are above the face here. Oh, see? As soon as I got a little bit charcoal and then I dragged it, it immediately just grabs that charcoal and makes it gray. So, I'm going to do a little bit where the white is there. Okay. Now, this is where you get kind of that furry effect that I told you not to worry about before. Um, just, just through the manner of the brush and the way you're going to do the strokes and the way that the charcoal absorbs that gesso. Um, I'm going to focus on the nice white spots. See now, I wanted that to be a little bit whiter than what's coming out already. So what I do is I just off to the side, or even on my rag, I can just clean off my brush a little bit. That way I can get it white again. I can go over this and lighten it up. Perfect. So you can see on this fox, on the wolf, sorry, that there's a lot of directionality to the way the fur grows on the face. So there's a lot of this nice upward curve up and around the eye, and then it starts to curve down. So those are just kind of the motions that I'm going to be making with my brush, and I would encourage you to be making as well. And it's neat because as the charcoal gets on your brush, you're, sometimes you're not only moving the gesso, but you're actually blending just the charcoal itself, which makes a really nice effect. So what I'm going to try and avoid doing right now is I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull a bit of the gesso into my nice black section, but I'm going to make sure that I don't go all the way over my black just yet. I want to keep that nice and dark. The way that I can make it kind of gray is I can pull from the edge here if I want with my gesso. I don't want to go right across because I want to try and keep that nice, rich, dark black that I've been talking about. And again, if you've already lost your rich, dark blacks, not the end of the world, we'll give it a dry. 
and then we'll go back in with the charcoal. It's going to be a little bit harder to get the charcoal on top of the gesso, but not impossible with a little bit of determination. So honestly, this is the fun part. You've got the shape, you've got the face, you're not worried about lopsided eyes because we only have half of a face. I did you a bit of a favor. Um, this is the part where you just get to go crazy and do your, your lights and your grays and make that wolf really pop out of the page and look really alive with all this nice cuddly fur, right? So we always think of wolves as cuddly, at least I do. Think about this that's fun, depending on your style, depending on your taste. Um, you don't even necessarily need to put that much just on. I think I'm just going to do a little bit for time's sake. But in sum, you can see that the approach here was the gesso. She did, she wanted to put a lot on. She got really into it. Um, with this one, I did less. I just focused on the nice where I wanted those gray patches. You can see where I left some of the paper. That's where it's going to be the whitest. So I'm going to try and leave some of that in this one as well. So I want to pull that out. Oh, give, give some fur over here. There we go. This is the little gray patch in here that I left. Add some gesso there. Yes, pull it out here. Okay. Want to lighten this up a little bit. This out, make it a little bit gray. If I make it dark down here, when I pull that charcoal down, I can really make that white patch pop just under his chin. And yeah, we're white in here. This is where I really want this to look like fur. Have this coming out here. And then there's not, there's not much going on in here. Now you can do, if you didn't get around to doing those whiskers, you can paint them in with your brush. I want to just lighten this up above his brow. some grays in his little ear. So again, I'm just trying to be careful to not paint over all of the black parts. Just a little bit of a white patch. We can use our brushes to pull that charcoal up. We just have chunky, chunky charcoal lines but the brush can really give it that fur effect. Oh, I've got that a little bit too dark. I'm going to lighten that up. There we go. So I'm actually going to realize that I actually want this nice side fur to be darker. And I'm going to wait for it to dry. I'm going to put my charcoal right back in there. Um, if you're finding that you've got a lot of gesso on your painting, um, when you take the charcoal and it's not quite dry, the gesso, you start to do it over top, actually can give it a really neat effect. The way that parts of the gesso have hardened will really grab the charcoal and give it these nice dark lines that weren't really there before. So it's fun, you can play around, you can do your charcoal and then with gesso on top and then before you know it you can be putting your charcoal over your gesso and you can go back and forth. So even though we were pretty strict starting with just our charcoal and moving into the gesso, now we're at the point where you can be going back and forth one or the other. I need a little bit more dark, I need a little bit more light, um, this is where you can really play with it. So 
So, here we are. We have our wolf charcoal gesso painting. Um, you have all done such a fantastic job tonight. I'm looking around. I'm seeing some really, really, really amazing pieces. Um, thank you for the laughter. Thank you for the jokes. I've had a super, super wonderful time with you tonight. Um, and I hope that when you leave here, you're going to tell your friends and your family just, well, really, I just wanted to brag about yourselves and what you've done tonight. Um, I hope you all make it home safely. And again, thank you very much for coming to Paint Night. Uh, my name is Catherine Darling. Uh, signing off. Thank you and have a good night.